ride. I'm going to explain the difference between torque and horsepower and the application of such in racing, especially drag racing. There's always big debates involved when people start talking about torque. And you get a lot of people who give their opinions on what's better and blah, blah, blah. And, and most of the time, they don't know what they're talking about. So I'm going to explain it here. You'll also hear the saying that torque wins races and horsepower sells cars. Is that true? That sparks huge debates. With one side saying, oh, no, no, you need horsepower, horsepower wins races, blah, blah, blah. The other side saying torque wins races. So let's have a look. First of all, let's imagine that we have a car with constant acceleration. All right, so from zero to 150 feet per second, this car can reach that in 10 seconds. We have, we can describe this line by an equation. The velocity is equal to 15t. What is the acceleration? Well, the acceleration is you just differentiate both sides, and you take dv over dt, which is acceleration, and you get 15 feet per second squared. That is the acceleration. That's constant acceleration. You can also figure out how far that car is going to go in 10 seconds. To figure that out, it's rather simple. You take that same velocity curve, 15t, and you integrate it. You integrate it from 0 to 10. And you can plot it. The integral gives you the distance. And it's described by this equation, 7.5t squared. So a car that accelerates at a constant rate of 15 feet per second squared will cover a distance of about 750 feet in 10 seconds. Okay? Now we're going to look at two cars. Both cars will accelerate from zero to 150 feet per second in 10 seconds. they're going to do it, we're going, to, we're going to break it up into two parts. We have a green car and we have a blue car. The green car will go from zero to 100 feet per second in five seconds. And then it goes from 100 feet per second to 150 feet per second in five seconds described by this curve, or this portion of the line up here. The blue car can accelerate from 0 to 50 feet per second in 5 seconds. And then it can go from 50 feet per second to 150 feet per second in 5 seconds. So on average, both cars go from 0 to 150 in 10 seconds. Now, each section can be described by an equation. For instance, the green car, the first section, can be described by velocity equals 20t, because this one is 10t. And here we have the velocity 10t plus 50. This constant is needed to, uh, to fit the line. And for this one, the same thing. Now, what the accelerations are given, because I'm using simplified units, and you know the acceleration of the green car here is 20, the acceleration of the green car here is 10, the acceleration of the blue car is 10 down here, and the acceleration of the blue car is 20 up here. So,
So it would seem that on average both cars have the same acceleration. They do. The blue, they both accelerate from zero to 150 feet per second in 10 seconds. So on, they both have the same average acceleration. The difference is the green car accelerates more quickly in the beginning and the blue car accelerates more quickly in the second half. The slopes of these lines are the accelerations. So the steeper the slope, the more acceleration. So the blue line, for example, is not so steep here. It has acceleration of 10. And it, has, it is more steep here. It has acceleration of 20. Now we can normalize the mass to make things to simplify things. So these are not actual power units. I've calculated the, the powers or the energies at different points. So at the end point, both cars are going to have an energy of this much, 11,250. The uh, green car, when it, at 100 feet per second, has an energy of 5,000. So how much power is that? Power is given by the change of energy over the change of time. So we take this energy, the final energy, and subtract the initial energy, divide it by the change of time, which is 5 seconds, and we have a power of 1,250 units, power units, I'll call them, because this is not horsepower or any other unit of power that we know, but we can convert this into horsepower if we know certain conversion factors. I'm leaving that step out. This is because the proportions are the same. Now, the blue car, to go from 50 feet per second to 150 feet per second, which is a change of 100 feet per second, and it does it in 5 seconds, gives us a power of 2,000 units. So the blue car has a much, much higher power rating than the green car use much more power than the green car. On the low end, we can do the same thing. We see that to go from 0 to 100, the green car it required 1,000 units of power, whereas the blue car only required 250 units of power because it only went to 50 feet per second instead of 100 feet per second. So what we can say the difference between these two cars are, or the difference is, is the blue car is a more powerful car, but the green car has more torque. Now let's plot distance covered by these cars, just like we did with the straight line. We'll see how far they've gone in 10 seconds. to do this in two parts because you know, we have a straight line from 0 to 5 and then another straight line from 5 to 10 with different uh, slopes. So this, the, uh, the line that describes the first part for the green car was 20t. We can integrate that like we did before and we find out that the distance is given by 10t squared and that would be this line here up to 5. Then we have to find out the equation from 5 to 10. And we start off with our velocity curve, 10t plus 50. Differentiate that, we have a constant. We have to figure out what that constant is by setting these two equations equal at 5 and solving for t, or solving for the constant at 5. And what we get is a constant of minus 125. So the equation of this curve from 5 to 10 is given right here, 5t squared plus 50t minus 125. Now, the blue car, we do the same thing. We, figure, we see the constant is plus 125. Now, what do these curves show us? Well, this is the distance versus time. So the green car has gone almost 900 feet in 10 seconds. The blue car has only gone about 650 feet in 10 seconds. The green car 
car is way out in front of the blue car. By 250 feet. Yet the green, yet the blue car has more power. How can that be? Well, the green car got off the line quick. The green car got up to speed quick. More torque. Now, you would say, well, the blue car is eventually going to pass the green car. And yes, it will. If it keeps going at the same at the same rate of acceleration, so let's see how long it's going to take before the blue car catches up to the green car. We just plotted these curves out until they cross. We just set them equal to each other and solve for t. We find out that t that the blue car will catch up to the green car in, in about 17.1 seconds. Which is here, which is about 2,200 feet, which is way past the quarter mile. Quarter mile is 1320, which is about right here. So the green car, the torquey green car, ran that quarter mile in about 13 seconds. And if we go out a little further right here, and we see that the blue car cover the quarter mile, even though it has a higher horsepower, in about 14 seconds. Okay. Now, something else that we can talk about that has to do with acceleration and energy. Energy given, of course, by E equals one-half mv squared. We're going to normalize our mass to to one to make it simple. And we want to figure out how much power it takes to go from one speed to another. Let's say from zero to ten units of velocity. And I'm not going to say feet per second or miles per hour or whatever. Just zero to ten and, and these are unspecified units of velocity. This, like I said, this is to simplify things. So we have our car that goes from 0 to 10. And these are the energies that are given. At 0 velocity, the energy is 0. And at a velocity of 10, the energy is 50. 50 units of energy. Unspecified units of energy. So how much energy did it take to go from 10 to 0? Well, you take the energy, you take the final energy, subtract off the initial energy, and you get 50. Very simple. Well, let's do the same thing, only instead of going from 0 to 10 units of velocity, we're going to go from 90 to 100 units of velocity. Like this, there's only a difference of 10 units of velocity. We're changing velocity by 10. So we plug 100 in here and 90 to calculate our final and our initial energies. And you get 950 units of energy. So, it took a lot more energy to go from 91 to 100 than it did to go from 0 to 10. 950 units of energy versus 50 units of energy. That's a big difference. A big difference in energy. Almost 20 times as much. Now, what is power? The change of energy or the change of time. Suppose that to go from 0 to 10 units of velocity. It only took 10 seconds. Well, we change, put in that change of energy, which we get right here, we put in here, and we put in 10 seconds. So it took 5 units of power to go from 0 to 10 in 10 seconds. How much power did it take to go from 90 to 100 in 10 seconds? Well, again, plug the numbers into the equations, and you see it takes 95, 95 units of power to go from 90 to 100. And this is 19 times more than that. It takes a lot more power to change velocity at high speeds than it does at low speeds. If you change the velocity at the same rate, 10 seconds or whatever. Five seconds for both. Now, suppose.
suppose that you have a given power of 50. We have 50 power units. How long is it going to take to change velocities? Well, suppose we have the 50 power units and we want to go from 0 to 10. How long is that going to take? Well, we can plug this in the equation. We have, so the change of energy is 50. We have 50 units of power. 50 divided by 50 gives us 1. It's going to take 1 second to go from 0 to 10. Now, suppose we have that same 50 units of power, but we want to go from 90 to 100. Well, that energy is 950. So we have to take this 950 energy divided by the power of 50, and we get 19 seconds. So it's much slower. The same amount of power, but much slower. Much slower acceleration. So that's why you have a powerful car. And at the top end, you know, it's just not accelerating that fast. You want, you want the force, you want torque to be at the low end, to get up to speed quickly. Because this is a contest in time. Time matters. Now, on the racetrack, yeah, power is going to be better. Because you're already up to speed. And you're trying to maintain speed. You're trying to pass cars. Or stay ahead of them. So it's better to have power. High, a lot of power on a racetrack. But on a drag strip, torque is key. Especially on an eighth mile drag strip. Torque is what you get you up to speed and get you covering distance in a lower amount of time. So I hope this explains it. Thanks for watching.